Hi, I'm Alex. My name is Sergei. We are Table Tennis 11 and today we are talking about table tennis balls. Where should you start from? Let's start from the very beginning or maybe even earlier. Table tennis as a sport has begun in 1901. It was when table tennis celluloid ball invented. Before that, as a ball was used different kind of things and this ball was made of different kind of materials. It was made of cork, most probably it was taken from champagne bottles or rubber balls or any other kind of materials. And for rackets they also used different kind of things such as books or cigar boxes. But let's return to our celluloid ball. As I have mentioned, the history of celluloid ball was started in 1901. Celluloid is very interesting material. It's a synthetic plastic which was developed in 1870s and it was used first as a cheap substitutor for ivory, animal horns and turtle shell. Later it was also used for camera film as we know. But during almost the whole history of celluloid material, it was used for production of table tennis balls. We don't know exactly the size of the first uh, celluloid balls, but after a while it was standardized as one and a half inch in diameter. In metric system it's 38 millimeters. And this size was in law until the year 2000 when it was replaced for 40 millimeter ball, 1.57 inches. Do you remember year 2000 when we changed from 38 millimeter to 40 millimeter ball? Yeah, I remember well this day because it was, uh, I was still active player. It was year 2000, I was 30. And uh, it was summertime when we first started and we were preparing for some competitions already. And the feeling was that the quality of the ball was, was very bad. So it was very difficult to play because it was not round. It wasn't round and uh, I think the hardness of the ball was not even throughout the ball. Uh, so the feeling was unpleasant at all. So it was like you can't meet the ball in the proper point to give him good speed and spin. But it gained the same spin as 38 millimeter ball or it was different story. For me, if the ball is not round, it is quite difficult to spin the ball because you can't, I would, I would describe it as meeting the ball in the right point. So you, somehow you miss it uh, to get in, in the best part of the racket, which is proper for the spin. But as it often happens with the new technologies or materials, the longer they are in use, the cheaper they become and more, it gains more quality. So after a while, if I remember correctly, these quality problems went, went in, the, in the shade. The quality was improved gradually, but still I think many top players think that it, it was not perfect until then, that the 38 millimeter ball was better in, in quality. And I think for me at that time, these players who were playing like Douglas, he was blocking a lot or Samsonov was perfect in blocking. So it was difficult time for them because it was somehow, because of the quality, more difficult to just block the open and uh, top spin or loop. Fortunately or unfortunately, the history of a 40 millimeter celluloid ball didn't last for a long time. And in the year 2014, the period was quite, quite long of the changes. It was changed for plastic ball. So the main reason was not to slower the game as it was before with 38 and 40 millimeter ball, but to get rid of obsolete material, which at that time became uh, celluloid. Celluloid was used at that time only for the production of table tennis balls and also fluctuation of the price for raw material was one of the reason and another reason was that it was extremely flammable material. It also reflected negatively in the price for transportation because table tennis balls were considered to be dangerous goods 
And in order to ship table tennis balls, you need a specially equipped means of transport or a specially arranged container. And it was not possible at all to ship by ear. It was not only the question of price or money, but it also took a long, long time to deliver balls. In some circumstances, when you need balls quite urgently for a tournament or for a league, sometimes it was simply impossible to deliver. As I remember, at that time, it was even more problems with quality. Could you tell something from your experience? Yeah, I also remember well, because it was less time ago than tra transition to 40 millimeter balls, or they call it 40 millimeter plus. And the quality of the balls were so bad that it was breaking very easily. So sometimes uh, we couldn't finish one set or we could play five minutes. There were funny stories also that people were bouncing the balls once on the floor and it was broken immediately. Of course, it was not that funny for the clients who has paid for the ball, but it was the quality was poor like this. It was also not fun for the players to play. Yeah, it is fun to talk now about this, but it, by that time it was a disaster and many players said they would quit table tennis. So it was quite damaging for the image of the sport and it, it was it was bad time. So. But before, before we continue uh, talking about the quality of the first plastic balls, we have to mention also that the size of the ball changed a little bit. Before, uh, the ball was 40 millimeter ball, but the actual size of the ball was a bit less than 40 millimeter. Celluloid 40 millimeter ball could be 39.8 millimeter up to 40 millimeter. But when the new plastic ball was introduced, uh, the diameter should be 40 millimeter or up to 40.2 millimeter. That's why it's called 40 plus millimeter ball. I have one interesting article. It's the article from the New York Times. It's called a Rio Table Tennis Lament. That's the way the ball crumples. And this article says uh, that it was a big, big problem during the Rio Olympics with the quality of the balls. There is one photo in the ad article. You can see it here. Uh, the players built a shrine to the fragility of table tennis balls being used at Rio. It was quite unusual think that table tennis attract so much attention at media and uh, the reason uh, was not the result of the tournament itself but uh, the quality of the equipment if i'm not mistaken it's the first time in the history of table tennis maybe somebody wanted to use this article or this article was written in order to trash one of the biggest producer of table tennis balls uh, i'm afraid we will never know this I remember it was first competitions with these plastic balls and it was a difficult time for the players because they could not complain about the balls if the ball was uh, produced by their brand. Like uh, Timo Ball could not complain about Butterfly, for example, and so on. So this is, this is as I see the situation. So And then it was not easy for the players to accept the quality and at the same time not to complain. Also, there was a lot of problems not only caused by the quality or durability of the balls. In the old time of celluloid balls, there were very few producers of uh, high quality table tennis balls. It was two factories in China, two factories in Japan. Actually, there was for a short period of time production in Korea. The first Olympics with table tennis sport in the program, it was Seoul Olympic Games in 1988. And at that Olympics, ball made in Korea was used. But since that time, nobody heard about the production of balls in Korea. After the new plastic ball was introduced, more and more producers appeared on the market. At present time, as far as we know, from the sources which are quite reliable, there are at least 10 big producers in China and a lot more small. One factory in Japan and one factory in Europe. But we will talk a bit later about this factory. I remember it was the first European Championship was played with Nitaku plastic balls. And Nitaku representatives were visiting the event in Europe. And they were very much upset because the balls were broken during the match. So and it was all the time and they could not improve the situation. So it was a very embarrassing time for the producers too. 
but it was a very difficult situation as the international federation they just put the decision in place and everybody should follow this decision and the producers the factories by themselves were not prepared for this as far as i remember at that time nitaku couldn't manage the mass production of balls and they told us that they produced all the balls literally by hand but they could not even <laughs> manage for the european championship some some quantity of the balls yeah we have also to say that to produce sufficient balls for european championship you have also to supply national federation that the teams uh, could prepare for the event yeah, so it's not not really a very small quantity also we have to say that a new seamless ball at that time appear on the market it's the first time in the history that the new seamless ball appeared it was very strange to see uh, absolutely whole piece of plastic which we can play table tennis with now for me it was a revolution and i think this is quite interesting technology which allows to produce the ball in this uh, production way and the bounce was completely different it was very easy to break too and i think even today it is quite fragile if uh, the player hit it with with the edge of the racket it uh, can be broken easily but comparing to the very first seam ball seamless balls were more durable uh, a bit more durable but if they were hit by the edge they were broken immediately so it was even that people were looking for the soft edge tape for the rackets to soften these strokes but also in the beginning there was no solution for transportation because in china it was still declared a stable tennis ball and transport companies still were considering this as the some dangerous goods it was not easy to transport and even today there are some kind of legends that you can't take it but by air because the plastic ball in the vacuum uh, where you have like less air pressure in in the aeroplane that it will be like some kind somehow damaged and right now we have a problem with transportation of seamless ball from hefu factory because they said that from may to october it should be transported in refrigerator container so it, it is too hot in ordinary containers so they can't survive so and it, i think even until today it is not clear how we should store the balls i mean the, the right temperature and so on and for the first plastic ball it was clearly said you can't put them below minus and then if the container was traveling by sea in the winter time it was below minus so it was not possible to transport it so the, the problem of transportation of transportation was not solved yeah actually there were a lot of problems with a very small table tennis ball but let's now show some balls from our assortment which we are selling at the moment we still have in stock for this 38 millimeter ball i guess uh, not many balls are on the market still so this is 38 millimeter ball three star yes ittf approved yes and that that this is uh 40 millimeter ball also celluloid so you can see the difference in sizes you don't need a special tool to see the difference by the way we will go later to the table and try these balls to refresh our memories but i think it's a very good idea and it's not commercial advertisement it's maybe my uh, advice to buy some uh, celluloid 38 millimeter and 40 millimeter ball and because sooner or later they will finish and it would be not available on the market so you can have very interesting experience playing with this ball after you get used already to the new plastic ball but please don't use them at the competitions because even they have a stamp ittf approved there are no longer any celluloid ball on the ittf approved list now at the moment there are not so many problems with the quality of the ball isn't it i would say the balls we sell so they have improved uh, the quality a lot i'm sure there are still balls on the market of not perfect quality but they don't belong to our assortment there are some problems with quality still the balls could be damaged or they could be deformated during the game but in general durability was improved a lot and this happened because the production started to use a new plastic material the first plastic material which was used was cellulose acetate and then we changed to abs plastic it was a big surprise for me when i found one article in the table tennis news 
It's official journal of English Table Tennis Association. This one dated November 1984. There is article about new table tennis balls from Dunlop and Basf. So, older player, even older than we are, they remember that in 1970s there was uh, one plastic ball introduced on the market and also even international championships were playing with this ball. This ball was called Barna. It was produced by Dunlop company and player didn't like this ball. It was hard as a stone, they say. And there was a story. It was the story that number two ranked in England, Carl Breen, refused to play with this ball and he withdrew from the official competition. And then Dunlop Company, together with big German producer Bosf, they decided to develop a ball from another material, which is called ABS. And in this article, it's written that the future is in the ABS ball not Japanese celluloid ball. At that time, most of the balls were produced in Japan. We are working towards competing with the best Japanese balls and we have made tremendous progress in the last six months. So in 1984, they say that the future is the ABS ball. And it took about 30 years. <laughs>